Can you increase the performance of your eGPU with a cheap headless display? In my last video, I showed how plugging a second display into my eGPU massively increased the performance on both my 2013 Mac Pro and two recent MacBook Pro laptops. But before you run off to try it, just bear in mind that this seems to be a bug specific to macOS Catalina and its drivers for the RX 5700 XT GPU. It possibly also includes other RDNA architecture GPUs. The Vega GPUs don't seem to have this bug, and I've not heard of Polaris GPUs, as cards like the RX 580 having the issue either. Now, it's probably something Apple will fix if they can find the time in between counting all their money and building new CPUs. But in the meantime, if you want to speed up your RX 5700 XT equipped eGPU and you don't want to have two monitors on your desk, do you still get the same performance boost with a cheap headless display? Let's find out. Now, firstly, you might be wondering what a headless display is. Uh, simply, it's a little device that presents itself as a display to your computer. Plug it into your graphics card and your computer will believe a monitor has been attached and it will behave as such. And now you might be wondering, what's the point of having a fake display that you can't actually use? And that's a fair question. There are actually a few uses for headless displays, but the one I'm most familiar with is when you need to access a computer via a remote desktop from another machine. Now suppose you have a computer that you use as a media server. Perhaps you've got a nice neat little enclosure and you want to tuck it away somewhere and you don't have the space or you don't want to have the inconvenience of permanently attaching a monitor to that computer, but you do occasionally need to access the machine. Well, instead of needing to drag a display over and connect it up each time, you simply plug in a headless display and then use remote desktop from another machine, like your laptop. Now, sure, there are ways of doing this without a headless display, but it's just an example of how some people make use of these things. Now, a headless display typically costs between $4 and $10, and you can buy them in HDMI, DisplayPort, or Mini DisplayPort format, and I'm sure there are probably others too. The one I have here is a DisplayPort format that supports 4K resolution. It was about £10. Uh, the cheaper ones typically offer lower resolutions. And why do you care about resolution on a display that doesn't exist? Good question. Of course, if your computer thinks it has a second display, then your desktop will extend onto that display, which means your mouse will move off the screen onto the non-existent display, and that could be pretty frustrating. Now, sure, you can mess around with the display arrangement, but that's probably not a convenient solution. A better solution is to simply mirror the displays. But suppose your main monitor is 4K and you buy a 1080p headless display, when you mirror, it's going to be at the lowest resolution, i.e. 1080p. So if you want to mirror a 4K display, you need to buy a headless display that supports 4K resolution. Hopefully that makes sense. So we've done a quick primer on what these things are. Now to get to the question at hand. Do you get the same performance benefits on the eGPU with one of these as you do if you add a conventional second monitor? The short answer is yes, you do. In my previous video, I started by testing the eGPU in Geekbench 5's metal test. And with a single display connected, it was scoring around 33,000 on average. But with the second display plugged in, we saw results as high as 70,000. And the same is true when the headless display is plugged in. Results vary, but they usually land in the 65 to 68,000 area. And what about real world performance? Again, in the last video, I tested some render times in Final Cut Pro, and I found that performance was anything from 50 to 200% better with the second display connected. And again, the same is true of the headless display, which makes sense because as far as the computer and the eGPU are concerned, this thing behaves exactly like an actual monitor. When I first started my eGPU adventure, I ran some benchmarks in Unigine Valley, and I was curious to see whether a second display improved performance there as well. And the answer is that it doesn't. Gaming performance seems to be unaffected by this bug, at least in OpenCL, which is what Unigine Valley uses. And that raises another question. Is this bug specific to the Metal framework? It doesn't seem to be as far as Geekbench 5 is concerned. My eGPU scored 62,708 in the OpenCL test with the headless display installed. And it's fairly typical to see OpenCL scores sitting just behind the Metal scores, so that looks right to me. Uh, but I guess I should also run the test without the headless display for comparison, so I'll do that and I'll put the result up on screen now. Uh, I expect it will be a lot lower. 
Anyway, this bug still exists, and I'm running the 10.15.5 release of macOS, which at time of filming is the most recent. Maybe it'll be fixed in the next update, or perhaps we'll have to wait for Big Sur. But at least we've got a cheap workaround in the meantime with the headless display. Now, if anyone out there has got one of the new 2019 Mac Pros with a 5700 in it, I'd love to know if this bug is present, or whether it's specific to eGPU usage. Well, that's it for this video. Please subscribe if you enjoyed my content, and if you want to support the channel. I'm discovering that it takes a huge amount of work and a massive investment to get a small YouTube channel going, so every subscription makes a huge difference to me as a creator. Uh, thank you very much for all your support. I really do appreciate it. Uh, please also leave a comment, and maybe I did enough to earn a thumbs up, or a thumbs down if that's your thing. In any case, I'll see you next time for some more geekery.